Hello and welcome back to another episode of Parry This. Today we're diving into a fascinating mix of history and speculative fiction, exploring one of the most pivotal battles in European history, the Battle of Waterloo. In this episode, we're not just revisiting the past, we're rewriting it with a twist of modern might. The Battle of Waterloo, fought on June 18, 1815, was a final showdown for Napoleon Bonaparte, marking the end of his reign and a significant turning point in European history. Known for its strategic maneuvers and the formidable opposition led by the Duke of Wellington, and Prussian General Blücher, Waterloo is a battle that has been analyzed and debated for over two centuries. But what if we added an element that history books never imagined? What if a single modern-day artillery squad, with all its advanced firepower and strategic prowess, was transported back in time to aid Napoleon in this decisive battle? How would this anachronistic intervention have changed the course of the battle, and potentially the course of history? In this speculative journey, we're going to unpack the historical Battle of Waterloo, introduce our modern artillery squad, and then dive into the hypothetical scenario. We'll explore how the inclusion of a modern artillery unit equipped with the kind of firepower unknown in the 19th century might have tipped the scales in favor of the French Emperor. So buckle up as we embark on this historical what-if adventure, blending fact with fiction, and witnessing the unfolding of an alternate history at the Battle of Waterloo. Background, the actual Battle of Waterloo. As we delve into the annals of history, let's set the stage for one of the most iconic iconic battles of the 19th century, the Battle of Waterloo. This clash, which took place on June 18, 1815, near Waterloo in present-day Belgium, was not just a battle, but a decisive turning point in European history. On one side stood Napoleon Bonaparte, the French Emperor, a military genius who had reshaped European politics through his conquests. His army, known as the Armée du Nord, comprised around 73,000 troops, including infantry, cavalry, and artillery units. Opposing him were the Allied forces, consisting of two main armies, the Anglo-Allied army, led by the Duke of Wellington, and the Prussian army, under the command of General Gebhard Lebrecht von Blücher. Wellington's army was a mix of British, Dutch, Belgian, and German soldiers, totaling about 68,000. Blücher's Prussian force, which played a crucial role in the latter part of the battle, numbered around 50,000. Napoleon's tactics were characterized by swift, decisive movements and concentrated attacks. His plan at Waterloo was to divide and conquer, aiming to separate the Prussian army from the Anglo-Allied forces and defeat them individually. The Duke of Wellington, known for his defensive prowess, anticipated Napoleon's strategies and prepared for a battle of attrition. He positioned his troops along a ridge, creating a formidable defensive line anchored by fortified farmhouses like Hugomont and La Haye Saint, which played significant roles in the battle. Both sides used smoothbore muskets like the British Brown Bess and the French Charleville as their primary infantry weapon, effective at a range of about 100 yards. Artillery played a significant role, with cannons being the mainstay for both armies. Cavalry units, included heavy and light cavalry, were crucial for both offensive charges and defensive formations. The battle commenced early in the morning, with Napoleon delaying his initial attack, hoping to let the sodden ground dry. This delay proved costly, allowing Blücher's Prussian forces more time to join the fray. The battle saw fierce fighting at key locations like Hugomont and La Haye Saint. Napoleon's attempts to break Wellington's line were met with staunch resistance. The turning point came in the late afternoon, with the arrival of the Prussian army attacking Napoleon's right flank. In a final final bid for victory, Napoleon sent in his elite Imperial Guard, a move that historically heralded victory. However, they were repulsed by the Allies. This marked the beginning of the end for the French forces, leading to a disorderly retreat. The Battle of Waterloo was a brutal engagement, with heavy casualties on both sides. The French army suffered approximately 33,000 casualties, while the Allied forces incurred about 22,000 casualties. The defeat at Waterloo ended Napoleon's rule as Emperor of the French, leading to his abdication and exile to St. Helena, where he eventually died. The battle reshaped the political landscape of Europe, leading to a period of relative peace, known as the Congress of Vienna, which sought to balance power and prevent the rise of another dominant figure like Napoleon. This battle, with its tactical plays, the valor of the soldiers, and the dramatic unfolding of events, stands as a testament to the complexities of warfare. It was not just a battle of arms, but a clash of strategies. 
wills, and historical trajectories. Understanding the real Battle of Waterloo helps us appreciate the significance of our speculative scenario, where the introduction of a modern artillery squad could have dramatically altered its course. Section 2. Modern Troops and Artillery Capabilities at Waterloo In our alternate historical narrative of the Battle of Waterloo, the introduction of a modern artillery squad creates a striking contrast with the 19th century battlefield. This modern unit comprises a specialized eight-man crew operating the M777 Howitzer, a 155mm towed howitzer that stands as a paragon of contemporary military technology, and a forward operating squad of six soldiers, expertly trained for reconnaissance, target acquisition, and real-time communication. The M777 howitzer, central to this scenario, represents a significant leap in artillery capabilities. It boasts an impressive range, capable of striking targets up to 40 kilometers away with rocket-assisted projectiles, and about 30 kilometers with standard shells. Its accuracy is a testament to the modern engineering, offering a level of precision unimaginable in Napoleon's time. The fire rate of the M777 is also notable. It can min maintain a sustained fire rate of two rounds per minute, and can ramp up to five rounds in burst mode. The destructive capabilities of its explosive shells far exceed the solid shot and canister of the Napoleonic era, capable of inflicting devastating damage on both enemy personnel and fortifications. The forward operating squad, equipped with binoculars for detailed visual reconnaissance and modern handheld radios plays a vital role in this setup. Positioned strategically within visual range of the battlefield, likely on elevated terrain for a better vantage point, they can observe enemy movements and identify critical targets. Their ability to communicate these details in real time to the artillery crew via radio is crucial, allowing for rapid adjustments and responses to the unfolding battle. Adapting to the historical context of Waterloo, the artillery crew employs manual targeting technologies, supplemented by the up-to-date information provided by the forward squad. This approach enables them to maximize the impact of their firepower. They can effectively engage enemy formations from a distance, disrupt command structures, and neutralize enemy artillery, providing Napoleon's forces with a significant advantage. The range and precision of the M777 allow it to influence the battlefield in ways that the artillery of the 19th century simply could not. In this reimagined Battle of Waterloo, the modern artillery squad does not merely add firepower to Napoleon's arsenal, it introduces a new level of tactical sophistication, combining the extended range and precision of the M777 with the adaptability and real-time communication provided by the forward operating squad. This fusion of modern military technology and tactics would have offered new and potentially decisive possibilities, fundamentally altering the conduct and perhaps even the outcome of this pivotal moment in history. Section 3 the Scenario, A Modern Twist at Waterloo As dawn broke over the fields near Waterloo on June 18, 1815, history was poised to unfold much as it had. But in this alternate narrative, an unexpected element stood ready to tip the scales. A modern artillery squad allied with Napoleon's forces. Ten kilometers from the battlefield, atop a strategically chosen hill, offering a commanding view, the modern artillery squad set up their M777 howitzer. This elevation not only provided a clear line of sight, but also ensured maximum effectiveness of their firepower. The forward operating squad positioned closer to the battlefield and equipped with binoculars and radios prepared to guide the artillery's fire. As Napoleon launched his initial attacks, the modern artillery crew awaited coordinates. The battle unfolded much as history recorded, with the Duke of Wellington's forces holding a defensive line along a ridge. The forward operating squad, observing through binoculars, relayed the first coordinates back to the artillery crew. British infantry formations near the center of Wellington's line. With precision, the M777 roared to life, sending its first shell arcing through the sky. Moments later, an explosion rocked the British line, sowing confusion and chaos where none had been expected. The effect was immediate and dramatic. Wellington's forces, accustomed to the limited range and accuracy of 19th century artillery, were unprepared for this unseen adversary. As the battle progressed, the modern artillery continued its barrage. Each shell from the M777 found its mark with devastating accuracy, breaking up key British and Allied formations. The forward operating squad, constantly on the move, provided real-time updates, allowing the artillery crew to adjust fire effectively. Napoleon, seizing the opportunity, intensified his attacks. His infantry and cavalry, emboldened by the artillery's support, pressed forward with renewed vigor. The Allied line, already reeling from the unexpected military onslaught, began to show signs of strain. The arrival of Blücher's Prussian army, historically a turning point in favor of the Allies, was met with a prepared 
prepared response. As the Prussians approached, the forward operating squad quickly redirected the artillery's focus. A barrage of shells rained down on the Prussian forces, disrupting their formations and slowing their advance. This intervention allowed French forces to engage the Prussians without the fear of being overwhelmed. As the day wore on, the M777's shells dwindled, but still were impactful. The tide turned decidedly in Napoleon's favor. A final concentrated barrage created a breach in Wellington's line. Napoleon, seizing the moment, ordered a massive push. French troops, supported by their relentless artillery fire, broke through the Allied defenses. As dusk fell, the battlefield, shrouded in smoke and chaos earlier, settled into a grim silence. The modern artillery squad, having expended their ammunition, watched as Napoleon's forces pursued the retreating allies. The Battle of Waterloo, once a crushing defeat for Napoleon, had turned into a stunning victory, thanks largely to the intervention of a single modern artillery squad. In this reimagined scenario, the addition of the modern artillery to Napoleon's forces altered the course of the battle dramatically. The extended range, accuracy, and destructive power of the M777 howitzer, combined with the strategic placement and communication capabilities of the forward operating squad, provided Napoleon with a decisive advantage. This technological anachronism not only shifted the dynamics on the battlefield, but potentially rewrote the history of Europe. Section 4, Potential Fallout of a Drastically Different Outcome at Waterloo The sweeping victory of Napoleon at Waterloo, bolstered by the presence of a modern artillery squad, would have rewritten the pages of history. The immediate aftermath of this crushing defeat for the Allies and the Prussians, marked by catastrophically high casualties, would have set in motion a series of ripple effects across the military, political, and cultural landscapes of Europe. In the wake of this unexpected triumph, Napoleon's military position would have been significantly reinforced. The decimation of the Allied and Prussian forces would not only have diminished their immediate capacity to continue the war, but also would have sent a wave of shock and uncertainty through their ranks. This shift in the military balance could have led to a renewed surge in morale and recruitment within France, bolstering Napoleon's army for future campaigns and potentially prolonging the Napoleonic Wars. Politically, the repercussions of such a defeat would have been profound. The governments of the Allied nations, grappling with the loss and the failure of their military strategies, might have faced internal pressures, calls for peace, or a re-evaluation of their stance against Napoleon. With his position strengthened by a decisive victory, Napoleon would have likely found himself in a more advantageous position to negotiate with the remaining powers, potentially seeking more favorable terms or even demanding concessions. The long-term implications of this alternate outcome at Waterloo would extend far beyond the immediate military and political consequences. The continued dominance of Napoleon on the European stage could have led to a different national boundary and political entities than those that emerged historically. The Congress of Vienna, which sought to redraw the map of Europe and restore order, would have been significantly challenged or perhaps rendered moot in the face of Napoleon's enduring rule. Moreover, the cultural and ideological spread of the principles of the French Revolution, such as nationalism and liberal reforms, which Napoleon had championed, might have seen a more prolonged and widespread influence across the continent. The legacy of these ideals, interwoven with Napoleon's extended rule, could have reshaped the cultural and political fabric of Europe in a way that are difficult to fully quantify. In essence, a Napoleon victorious at Waterloo, especially under the conditions of a modernized form of warfare, would not have simply altered a battle. It would have potentially reshaped the entire trajectory of European history. The fallout of this drastically different outcome would have echoed through the corridors of power, across battlefields yet to come, and within the collective consciousness of nations for generations. In reimagining the Battle of Waterloo, with the addition of a modern artillery squad, we've journeyed through a fascinating blend of history and speculative fiction. This scenario, while hypothetical, illuminates the profound impact that technological advancements in warfare could have on historical events. The juxtaposition of 19th century battle tactics with 21st century artillery power not only changes the outcome of a pivotal battle, but also invites us to consider the broader implications such a shift could have on European history. This exercise goes beyond mere historical curiosity, offering insights into the ever-evolving nature of warfare and the delicate balance of factors that dictate the course of history. This exploration into an alternate history underscores the fragility and complexity of historical events. 
The drastic change in the outcomes of Waterloo, resulting from the intervention of modern technology, serves as a stark reminder of how small changes can have far-reaching effects. It challenges us to reflect on the intricate tapestry of history, where each thread is interwoven with countless possibilities and outcomes. As we contemplate this reimagined past, we gain a deeper appreciation for the relentless march of technological progress and its enduring impact on the course of human events. But that's all for today, and I'll see you on the next Battlefield.